For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Apple's Outdoors with me, Mike. Sending you guys a bit of kind of like a pitching slash tutorial video about how you're going to pitch uh, the Quest uh, Kensington awning. So kind of for this video, we'll kind of talk through the processes uh, and we'll occasionally kind of cut to internal shots as well. It's going to be kind of more of a, a dual kind of vision of how it's going to go up. So for me, we'll start at the most easiest point is for me, I'd say is you want to almost lay out the framework in approximately where it's going to be. So if we get the frame bag itself, open it up. Now, there is a frame diagram normally supplied with the awning, so you can always have a look at that if you want to kind of get yourself a bit more familiar where it is. Uh, admittedly, it's probably the second time I've pitched this awning to Australia where I've kind of got a bit more of an inkling on where things go. Often, you'll find there'll be different kind of poles, so you'll have ones that go, say, vertically up from there. So you have three of those. You then have your kind of rear leg pole, which has kind of got this little metal clasp on it, so they go vertically down. So again, we'll make sure we go from there and then you also find you'll have sort of leg poles which go vertically up at the front so again we can kind of position those in place as well the joys of having everything kind of laid out is a you can check you've got everything you're meant to have uh, but also b when you want it to sort of install certain things in certain locations it's much easier to do so because you can just pick it down put it in place rather than trying to hold something while it comes around so you also got these little ridge poles, number six, so that goes across the sort of width itself. And then we've got another ridge pole. There's number, we're from number 13, is like an additional adjuster, so the main central leg, uh, which has, is the only one without a little button clip. That's got one. That hasn't. So that one basically goes directly onto there. To create the point, so that's the button clip that goes into the kind of the cross member, and then we've got canopy poles which have the black kind of ends on either side. So again, you want to put those at the front. So we kind of got everything laid out. You've got kind of three cross members, two of a curve, and one with a bit more straight. Now you want kind of the the curve so when it's in place to be sort of dead flat. So for example, number three is going to go down to the right here. And then number five to the left. So now we're quite happy in where things laid out. What the next thing we'll do is actually kind of feed the awning directly through the actual rail itself. Now we've done like a tutorial video about pitching a kind of a porch awning, a traditional porch awning. Uh, and for that video, we took the side panels out just to make it a bit lighter, a bit easier to slide through the rail. Um, so you can always look at that. For this particular video, what I'm going to do is actually feed it through with all the panels included. Right, so it does make life a little bit harder, but uh, you can use a slightly different pitching method, which is kind of, we'll kind of show you through the video as well. So it's an alternative way of doing it. First one to do, ideally you want some sort of ground sheet laid down here. So it means that when you're sort of pulling around the awning, it's not going to get sort of, uh, sort of grass stains or if you're on hard standing kind of rips or snags anywhere. But as I'm just literally pitching it and then taking it straight back down again for the purpose of the video, uh, I would probably I'll be a bit naughty and not going to do that. So we'll spread it out itself. You want to kind of locate where the beading or the cater, as it's known, is and position that a little bit towards the awning. Now, at this stage here, I'd recommend putting on the bracket poles, the bracket pads. So the bracket pads itself are what the kind of hook of the upright clips directly into. So. Now we've got a nice easy level here. It's a great thing to slide these on at this point, just because it keeps it nice and simple. It means you haven't got to try and do it up high. You can always tweak it when it's on, but it's much easier to put it on from a much lower point. So you've got three in total. You've got two for the corners and one dead center. Two for the corners are nice and easy to kind of find out where they go. There's a little kind of slot where the pole come out and you want it around about the same place. Like so we can tweak it as we kind of go. And then the one always create an area dead center between the two sections. And that's where your additional ones kind of got to go from there, really. So now we're in this position, what I'm going to do is kind of bring the material and the awning a bit closer into the van itself. And we're going to just feed that 
directly into the rail. Just making sure as we feed it through, it doesn't catch it at any stage. This is where if you've got a second pair of hands, it does make life a little bit easier. And then we're just gonna keep it coming through. The more the awning's almost underneath the vehicle, kind of the, the easier it tends to glide. So once it's physically on, we can kind of pull it out a little bit and sort of bring it into position. So position wise, you want to kind of make sure that you've got enough room to open your sort of door as you see fit. So you can always put on a, pull the foam pad up, position it quite nice and neatly. Give yourself, give yourself a little bit more room than you necessarily think you'll need. At this stage here, what I kind of recommend doing, if you've got all the panels in place, is approximately just pegging out the front a little bit. The reason I say this is actually, it kind of brings the fabric away from the caravan. So when you're inside of it, it makes your life a little bit easier kind of pulling everything into place. So it doesn't have to be exact. It's only really, like I said, to pull the fabric a little bit further away. Choose the corner points initially located down here. So where there's a little kind of webbing strap. You don't want to probably go too far away from the van, just so the material's just a bit further out. And what we'll certainly see a bit later on is when we've kind of done the um, the first main ridge pole. So with this kind of awnings, you tend to start, come out from the centre and work your way out from there. It makes life a bit easier and you're not having to fight with it. To be fair, it almost holds the kind of poles in shape a little bit. So I'm not going to go too far, just enough to... Keep ourselves quite nice and neat. And what's a nice idea, what we can almost do is feed the poles a little bit underneath the actual awning as well. And that'll make life a lot easier to pitch a bit later on. That's the external poles, that right legs. We'll feed that in again. And that's where having everything kind of laid out, like I said, it will just speed the process up further down the line. I think we're not too bad then. We're kind of where we want to be. Wicked. So first thing we'll do is we insert the kind of the uh, kind of cross joint into the center point and then sort of spread the pole out from there. Because the back's not pegged, it gives us sort of easy access straight into that section. So like I said, we're gonna kind of feed the uh, little canopy pole directly through the sleeve, put the, put the spike through the roof of the actual awning itself. We can then quite happily put the metal pole directly on. So it clips into the bracket at the top. And from there, extend the awning out and clip it into the bracket at the very front. Once the button clip clips in place, you hear a little ping, and just to spread that out a little bit, just to give a bit of tension, just kind of stop it moving a bit, to be fair. From here, if we insert the, the leg pole itself, that'll keep the whole section quite nicely and neatly up. Again, making sure the button clip is in place. And just extend that pole out just a little bit, just to give you a bit more internal headroom and enough so we can still actually get to the roof of the fabric itself. Now we're in a section here, we can actually then put the cross members in. I would recommend doing the cross members uh, so that the adjustable kind of joint, if you will, is a bit further away from the middle. So as you kind of extend it out, it makes life a bit simpler to kind of move it around. First, I have a tendency to want to twist a little bit. So now we're in this position where we've got this kind of what I call T kind of shape, is we can actually extend it outwards and do the corner pieces at the same time. So again, what we're going to do is just feed the canopy pole directly through, extend out the arm, and then clip that in place and extend it out a little bit just to make sure that the eyelet, the spring stays out of the eyelet a bit. You haven't got to kind of over tension it. 
Again, we'll put the physical leg in place. Extend that down so it holds into place and then do the clip back on the other side. I know it's a bit hard to see kind of me being inside, but I've hopefully got some internal shots of what I'm doing. It makes life a little bit easier. We're going to extend that out a bit. Let's get tension in the roof. And we'll do the same with the other side. So again, part goes through. Point up, extend that middle pole directly out. Clip that into the frame. Kick that in place. Extend that out a bit to get a bit of tension in the roof section. Put that rear leg nice and neatly in. Extend the leg actually down to hold its weight. And then from there, we can bring that roof pole back in, into the bracket at the top, and connect it to the main frame itself. And extend out. So now we've kind of got the frame pretty much up. The peg's gonna hold it in place, so if it's a bit of a windy day, we can quite happily kind of accommodate that. For me, what I wanna do now is we'll kind of flip the uh, canopy over the south. It depends on whether you want to put these additional canopy poles in first or now. For me, I've put them in place ahead of time just because it means that I can tweak it. I haven't got to sort of insert them at this point. So they're all nicely there. I fold that back and there's a sleeve in the front of this section for essentially the canopy pole. Uh, the canopy pole is the one with the two black ends and number 14-1. Um, so what I would probably recommend doing is you've got an adjustable bracket, you want that to be that sort of in the middle there. So for me, if you feed that initially in, it goes onto the spike and pull it down and round. Extend. Yep. Just turn it the other way around to make sure that uh, adjustment strap is down the bottom. Extend that open and through that sleeve. And from there, hook that on and around to the point. So at this point here, I'm just gonna leave it in place. These parts are undone, so it still is able to move. That clip is undone, so it's still able to move. And we'll just do the same on the other side. Because what we can do is once it's all in place, we can then properly adjust it up, get it looking smart before we do the final kind of extension of all the poles. So now we've kind of got it in position, what we want to do is make sure you then fit it nice and snugly against the caravan. To do this, we want to insert the rear pole first. Um, the key thing is making sure that where we've initially pegged at the front, we've still got enough play to kind of come back. So to be fair, we might just unpeg that a little bit, or if, if it's a bit of a windy day, just bring that pegging point in a little touch, just to kind of keep it be, but because it's not too windy today, so we bring that framework back a little bit to make sure we can get a really nice and tight fit against the actual uh, awning itself. So what we now do is go inside and insert that back pole. So the back pole actually kind of clamps up into the top section so you can feed that directly in. The key thing really is to make sure that the wing nut is from the outside. So you can easily kind of pop that on there and the arc is going directly into the pad. Um, so think of it almost like kind of a, a leg that pushes against it. Once you've kind of done the top part, I would then recommend Velcroing the pole onto the actual uh, leg. And then you can always then extend it down and try and again, push that foam pad a bit tighter against the actual caravan itself. It's really pushing that foam pad directly into the awning. Do the same on both sides. So again, do the same on those sides. So now we've got it nice and firmly against the caravan. What we want to do is then peg it back in the back corners again to make sure we keep that firm part. Often what we might find is we need to kind of bring the uh, section out a little bit 
just want this dead square so it's offering really nice sort of support against it so i would personally want to peg it about about maybe half a foot underneath the caravan you can always bring it back in but being it backwards out away from the caravan but to get it back there again is a bit more of a tricky feat so that's, that's certainly something you can kind of look at doing so we'll do the same on both sides Once we're in that kind of position, obviously at this point you want to make sure all the doors are quite nicely done up before we do the proper full on peg. So now we've kind of done back a couple of corners, it's nicely and firmly against the caravan. From here what we can almost do is go inside of it, adjust it sort of versely in terms of height. Um, but also in terms of width and just tighten it as we see fit. So if we go directly through the front door, the key thing is that when you do this adjustment is make sure that the doors are all sealed so you're not kind of over tensioning and not able to shut the door. So for me, I would always start with the middle leg, get that height to where we need to be. You can tell almost by the ground in terms of where the pegging point is and how, how high it needs to be. So you need it sort of tall enough that you could actually engage the actual kind of uh, elasticated part. So again, look at the mud wheel, wall from that point. Joys of these kind of poles is that you can obviously pick and choose uh, the actual height of it. So if you're on a slope for any reason, you can quite neatly do that. When it comes to the corners, I recommend following the seams in terms of where the position of the leg should be. That way what you find is that the poles can sit in the right position. And again, we can kind of pull this away from the caravan. And if need be, kind of tweak it a little bit outwards. Uh, from the roof section, that's looking really quite nice. Might adjust the roof poles a little bit just to get a touch more tension in there. Now it's kind of about the right height, but I think really that's done a good job in the first instance. So now we're looking quite tight in terms of the roofs. What we can then do is finish off kind of our little box scenarios. We've done the back corners, we want to do the front. Again, ideally you want it sort of a perfect kind of rectangular point. And from here, I'd almost like to move the leg a bit further out as well to kind of follow that seam. All of the flaps need to go sort of internally just because it's kind of a mud wall from the inside, it's then going to allow you to quite happily peg directly down rather than trying to peg through the skirt it's, itself. So, yeah. From here you can again kind of tweak it as we go, making sure we're nicely square and that pole is on that seam line. From here, I'd probably recommend doing the front panel. So what we must do again is tension against one another. So with the actual kind of toggle points itself, is I'm gonna kind of tension and cross over these points. That one pulls back that way, so it means that the front panel, I can easily zip up as I need to. And then that one, the additional one going back the other way, keeps this fabric a bit tauter. You want a sort of a dead flat line on the front of it, so that's quite key. Essentially, it's going to mean that it's going to look a bit smarter and you obviously want that perfect kind of rectangle kind of scenario, really. It's very, a lot of people find that it's, they want to peg almost out rather than directly down. Uh, and if you want to peg down the keys to get that sort of frame lifted a little bit more. I think it's one of the things that more and more you do it, kind of the better, better you become at it, for sure. That does make quite a bit of a difference. So again, we do the central one. You can quite work your way around. The joys of the elastics, obviously, if you've got plenty of play kind of in them. So, and you get a sort of stormy weathers, you kind of brace it a bit more. There are kind of additional ties located here. So if you wanted to kind of, again, like I said, just give a bit more bounce and braces, you can buy some additional guide points. 
and that's going to kind of keep it a bit tauter. From the side point of view, what we can do is just bring that canopy out a little bit more. The same idea, so we want to probably start towards the back, cross over the points again here, bring that back down. Again, we're going to kind of remain that really nice straight edge. Do either side of the corners first, just to kind of keep it in shape. Cross them over, and from there, then do the central point. And finally, last but no means least, we'll do the other side. It's quite an easy, you know, it's not really much change to be fair. You can do this be a bit quicker doing it with a second pair of hands, admittedly. For me, doing it on my own, it takes a little bit more time, but at the end of the day, I can be doing this while, you know, the other person more than happily starts doing the inside or sort of gets the caravan set up. But that's kind of the main thing. One thing we've got left to do is they do the kind of industrialized kind of storm town kits that come as standard with the actual model. So with this, you get really nice kind of strong webbing strap as well as a kind of a heavy duty kind of anchor peg. So the storm strap itself clips on to the side and then tensions it down. For me, I always go about it by pegging where you want the peg to probably go. It's a really nice V-shaped peg. Line it directly down. You want it to kind of about a 45 degree angle, just that way when it kind of pulls itself back, it kind of works nicely. Merely attach the spring directly on, and then the actual strap onto the point there. And then you can kind of tension back on itself just to get that firm tension when you need to, and then it will spread down like so. And because you've got the spring there, you've got a little bit of give to it. So even though it's quite a strong tension down, if you were to get kind of windy weather or gusts, the spring gives it a little bit of give. Just means that again, it's not gonna suddenly start ripping the seams out or anything. It's just got a little bit of play, which you kind of do need with these kind of awnings really. Just because the tolerances of the kind of the frame itself is and the canvas is quite taut. So it means that, that will give it a good amount of strength initially, but you can get the remainder of course by doing the straps. A lot of people will actually go for the point where you can buy additional ones to go over the top of the actual um, awning. So it's like one strap that goes over it. For me, that's not a recommendation I kind of say. It's handy, don't get me wrong, but then you're always open to kind of the fabric slipping with the wind over the top and it's gonna kind of wear material down a little bit. The last and final thing I've yet to actually physically do is insert the curtains, but it's quite an easy process for that. So that that's hopefully doesn't need too much explaining. But for more questions and queries, by all means, feel free to check the link below this video. It'll take you straight through to our website where we've got things like pack sizes, pack weights, floor dimensions, individual features of this particular one, as well as our own kind of review video we've done on the Kensington with the Windsor Annex, Westminster Annex, I should say. Um, but yeah, simple to do. Like I said, can easily be done by one person as you've just seen, but feel free to let us know what you think of it, whether you've got one uh, or any other videos you'd like us to see us do. But yeah, like I said, for more information, check the link below. But thank you again for watching and we'll hopefully see you again soon.